Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Dubai Real Estate Unplugged, the official House and House podcast. I'm Luke Remington, Managing Director at the House and House Group. Joining us today to dive in some recent updates to talk about, well, I think we're probably going to go off topic a bit, Tom, uh, but calculators, evictions, valuations, um, probably aimed at landlords and tenants, I would say so, but there's going to obviously be then movements onto buyers and sellers. Um, I'm welcomed by our sales director, Thomas Paulson, who was previously a leasing director. Welcome back to the show, Tom. Um, just tell me a quick bit about yourself before we uh, get into it. Uh, thanks for having me again, Luke. Uh, yeah, Thomas Paulson. I've been in real estate now for over 11 years, actually 12 years now. Wow. So I've literally, but... That's the only job I've had, the only career I've had, to be honest with you. So I've done it in the UK, came out to Dubai in November 2016, always with house and house. Uh, so yeah, so far th- so good. I think it's good to know when someone's been in the industry for a decade plus, they hopefully have a good industry knowledge. So yeah. uh, you should be able to give us some good points today. Let's start with the basics, Tom. Um, there's been a lot of attention recently regarding calculators, we're not talking Casio calculators, we're talking about RERA calculators. There's been a lot about evictions. We're hearing you, we were off the uh, off air earlier talking about valuations, but I first want to dive into a big change that's happened um, and it's revolving around the RERA rent calculator. So before we start on that, can you explain what the RERA calculator is and what is what's happened? Yeah, so just to put it into context, Firstly, RERA, that's the Real Estate Regulatory Authority, government body, and they set all the policies out and effectively can regulate the market. So they have a calculator that was actually, I believe, established in 2013 to basically control rent increases. Wow, was it 2013? Yeah. Um, So they- So even before the booms and, you know, 2013, we would have been in good times, 2014. 14, that's where start, uh, what well, 2015 starts tailing off. Yeah. So I didn't actually realize it's been out that long. Yeah, so that was to curb rent increases because naturally as the market, I wasn't out here when yeah. you were. And yeah. I know it's been uh, somewhat volatile over the last yeah. 20 years and massive spikes and mass and also the same declines. But yeah. yeah, they had to curb the increases because I believe that you know you could move in to the property and then within a year, your property rent could have doubled in price or, you know, to put that might be talking a bit uh, far-fetched, but nevertheless, the sentiment is there that there was no control over it. So what's happened in the last, uh, so how, just so you know how it works to rear a calculate for those who do not know, is that it takes uh, communities and areas in Dubai and it separates them. And they basically work out the average rent per property type in that area. So there'll be, for instance, uh, three beds in Arabian ranches generalized and they'll say what the average rent is based on new contracts registered uh, for the Ijari data. So when you register your tenancy contract here, it registers through the government system, uh, centralized, and that then picks up all the data from there. And that's when you get an Ijari certificate. That means you're an official tenant. Uh, yeah. So that's where the contract is officially registered with the land department, which all tenancy contracts must do because without an Ijari, you cannot raise cases. It's not a valid contract. Yeah. So that's why we have now access to all this data. Yeah. Which is great because uh, it's transparent and, you know, and I don't think many places in the world. I tried to ask my friend back home actually recently um, because one of the guys in the office was looking at buying an investment in the UK and he wanted to know what the average rent prices were and mm, what rent yeah. transactions were, but there is not that data available. Mm. So yeah, it's- so, um, so the rent calculator is available for everyone to see or just real estate brokers and prop- someone in property developers? Everyone. It, everyone it's on the Dubai it. Rest app. Um, it's on the- the RERA website, the Dubai Land Department website. And how it works is that any rent increases, if it can have a rent increase, okay, which we'll go on to after, what justifies or warrants a rent increase and doesn't, has to be agreed at least 90 days before the expiry of the contract. Mm. And if it gets to day 89, it's technically you are not allowed to change actually the terms of the next contract. So when that, you that's say, as per the law. When you say greed, what about I, 91 days, I want to put your rent up and you say, no, I don't want you to put my rent up. That's not greed. It's not agreed, but if the, the, the calculator takes precedence. So if I was the owner of that property, I put my, so how it works is that you put in your current rent that you're receiving yeah. and then it works out if you're a percentage behind what they deem based on the, data provided is the market rate. Okay. So if you're, I'll 
try and explain this as simply as possible without having a whiteboard and numbers in front of me. But if you're naught to 10% lower than the average rent deemed in that area, so if you were receiving 100,000 dirhams rent as an owner and the rent was 100,000 as per them, the average, you would be entitled to no increase, naught okay. to 10%. Yeah. And then it goes up in increments. 11 to 20%, you're 5% allowed an increase if you're behind that amount. If you're behind 21 to 30%, it's 10%. And this goes up in brackets all the way up to 41% plus. So if you're over 40% behind what the current market is in your rent, if you're receiving a massive loss in the sense of what the average is, it's capped at a 20% maximum increase. And that 20% or 10% or 5%, whatever you're talking about, is of what that tenant is paying at that time. Exactly that. So if I was- Paying freeze, 100, you can go up to 105 or 110. Yeah, or 100. so the maximum increase on 100,000 dirham rent, yeah. if you were 41% plus behind the market, even if you were 100% behind the market, let's yeah. just say the average rent was 200,000, yeah. yeah. you would be only entitled to a 20% increase. So that'd be 20,000. Yeah. So it's because they want to make it fair, I guess, to the owner, because that's a significant chunk of money uh, to receive, even though the owner still might feel hard done by because if they're double, you know, if, if they should be receiving double. But they also, as we know, do heavily favor tenants as well. Mm. They want to look after the tenants, the land department. They want to try and make it as fair as possible. Mm. And then going from me saying to you, Luke, right, you've now got to double your rent next year. Well, Inflation, your salary probably yeah. has, you know, inflation's gone up. Mm. Uh, your salary probably hasn't gone up 100% on average. Mm. So they, you know, that's very difficult and they yeah. they don't want to make people struggle in yeah. that sense. Yeah. So okay. that's what they deem as fair. So to recap, the calculator is only used in a increasing market. If the market is going down, so let's say we're going, so we mentioned 2013, it's rolled out. 2015, the rents are coming down. 16, they're coming down. 17, they're coming down. 18, they're coming down. 19, I think they're coming down. Then obviously no one's going onto a calculator. What does a landlord do in that scenario? Well, there is no rent decrease calculator. So okay. it's not like the tenant can roll reverse and be like, well, actually the rents are going down. So I can yeah, now go Because the tenant's just going to say I'm off. And yeah, I'll go and find because some. if it's significantly cheaper, the rent, yeah. then it makes it worthwhile the move. Yeah. Now, obviously, if it was only a certain, you know, slightly lower, it probably yeah. isn't worth the tenant moving because they have to pay usually a 5% uh, agency fee, they have yeah. the battle with their deposit, they have to rectify the property probably back to where how they received it, and plus the general moving cost. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you were the owner, and if there was a dispute, basically, and either party are not happy, let's just say the rear calculator is used and it allows an increase and the tenant disputes that I think you alluded to that earlier, yeah. if I'm not happy about it as a yeah. tenant, you have to go and open a case down at the rental dispute center, otherwise known as the RDC. Mm. And that's when it will go potentially to a judge who will take into effect the, the context of why you're not happy. Perhaps the tenants forked out loads of the maintenance that the owner should have paid for and never paid it. And then the owner's now trying to be potentially greedy and increase the rent. And there's a lot of different nuances to as to why the tenant may feel aggrieved or not. But generally, the tenant can't just go, no, I don't agree to it without the, the, the owner as well. The flip side, if the tenant refuses to hand over the rent, yeah. the owner can open a case against the tenant yeah, okay. and it okay. will probably side with the owner. Okay, so we've got a good understanding about the calculator, the rear calculator. What has made the headlines this month? Yes, so the reason why we're sat here talking about it is because the rent in uh, the calculator, the index calculator, probably hasn't been updated I would say actually for about a good four years okay. um, to my understanding, based on my own experience. However, two weeks ago, it finally had, and it was a major update as in it's pretty much in line, I think now with actual prices today. Okay. And for the listeners who don't know, the market since 2020, really about August time has only really shifted upwards. The, the cost for both uh, house prices for sale and rental prices have yeah. gone up astronomically since then. Um, so that's why in the calculator for the last four years has been outdated okay. as per that. Yeah. So a lot of owners were aggrieved. Yeah. They were on COVID rates, you know, I use that word, uh, you know, with the asterisks there, um, where a lot of the rents were massively decreased to keep tenants here or keep tenants happy and in their properties and rent it out. However, due to how the calculator works, they were not allowed to increase their rent. Yeah. Um, 
And therefore, in today, someone who rented out their property even maybe two months ago could be receiving a lot less rent than they probably entitled to and were not allowed to get an increase. So now that's finally updated, which has meant that there's probably a lot of tenants out there going to be receiving rent increases this year moving forward. So, but you would say over the last four years, I think it's very fair to say that it's definitely been in the tenant's favour. Absolutely. I'll, I'll use my own personal example. So now I, I'm a homeowner, okay? But when I was renting uh, my apartment in Dubai Hills Estate, okay, that the building was, I think, pretty much handed over around 2020. Mm. I, I've lived in there since 2021 one or maybe the end of 2020 either way it said that and i was paying and it was the and it was the what's probably the most expensive building in dubai hills estate okay in terms of because it's sizable and it's nice it's low rise and uh so it gets the top end mm. of the rent that's my point so it said the average i was paying sixty thousand dirhams a year okay in rent now i the average rent was between for a one bed in Dubai Hills as per the calculator since 2021, because I actually looked through my messages because the owner was trying to increase the rent for me. Okay. And it was between 47 to 57,000 dirhams. That's what it said the average rent was. So I was above that. Yeah. However, and it was still saying that even until I, I left the in October last oh, year, okay. and it was even still the same then. And, so I, the and actually the rental prices for that was we were transacting them even here at House and House for like 100 to 120,000. Wow. So, so it was 50%. You're in theory paying 50%. Oh, less no, than yeah, actually, I was paying, no, 100, like now we rent them for 120,000. Okay. Nearly 100% I was in, oh. behind the market. Wow. It was double nearly. Wow. So, rightly so, the owner was probably aggrieved. Um, he couldn't, as per the rental calculator, increase it. And we'll go on to maybe different ways in, in a minute of how it, you could slightly get an increase if it's completely outdated. But the point is, is that it wasn't really fit for purpose okay. because okay. he was suffering and I was winning as a tenant. So, so what it sounds like that the DLD, the Dubai Land Department, have now got a huge amount of transactions. They've got all the de the, the rentals that are coming through from the Ajari figures. They can calculate where everything's been rented. It's all gone into this massive amount of tech framework. And now the calculator's been updated and the calculator is today giving the correct prices. Yes, it's definitely more in line with the average rental prices. Now, there are still issues with it, in in our opinion. Um, they can't get it perfect. They do a great job yeah. of trying to obviously police the rents. But for instance, there's only two sub-communities, which is in my opinion, what should now be happening with, they've got with all this AI, mm. you know, technology and all the data that they have, they should be able to pretty much do it, in my opinion, building to building. Because yeah. one building in Dubai Hill State, as an example, or Marina, or any part of you know downtown, any community, is going to be very different even to the building next door. You yeah. could have a very high-end, luxurious building, yeah. Yeah. which has got two beds next to another two-bedroom, which might be yeah. old, it might be smaller, for whatever reason, not as desirable. I have to remember there was once a, a landlord and he he looked directly over the Burj Khalifa. Yeah. yeah. He was saying, well, the calculator does not give, it give doesn't give me anything for that. There's no, there's no. no drop down box to say Burj Khalifa view. Okay, we'll put it up by another five, 10%. Exactly. So in theory, something that looks out over a Diwa substation and something that looks over a Burj Khalifa, there is no difference. Exactly. There's no, it, there's no difference as per the calculate. It yeah. doesn't define. And obviously in rent achieved, yes, there is, you know, yeah. as we know, it's yeah. more desirable, therefore it will achieve more money. But, but if you've got an existing tenant, you're yeah. stuck. Exactly. You okay. are stuck because you have to give a year's notice to that tenant to get them out of the property. And then legally, you're not allowed to re-rent that property for two years if you do that. Because okay. that also stops the landlords yeah. creating tenants, not effectively, I want to say homeless, but that's yeah. the point, right? Yeah. Forcing them to pay more. It's the same thing. So yes, it, once again, back to what my earlier comment, it does favour the tenant, the law in that sense. It wants to look after them. However, yeah, this update to the calculator, I think a lot of owners will naturally be happy with it. Yeah. Um, but there are what we just referenced there. Okay, in downtown, there is actually two buildings which on the calculator now have 
differentiated, uh, which is downtown views and the 118 randomly. I, I don't know why them two buildings have their own index. So you can look at downtown? Yeah, the whole of downtown and there's two random buildings that you can pick uh, an index. So maybe lucky for them owners or-, or and, and, and is there much difference between those prices? Did you look in that far or? I'll be honest, I'm not a downtown expert. I okay. believe that the, the yeah, I, I actually, I'm not too sure, okay. to be honest. Okay. I, I could have done my Interesting. So that could but, give us an idea that maybe it's something to come, that they are going to be rolling out yeah. the buildings. And, and, and they have in, in two communi- two villa communities. Uh, so Arabian Ranch is one and two. Okay. Uh, so sorry, with three villa communities. So Arabian Ranch is one, Arabian Ranch is two, and Dubai Hills Estate for their sub-communities within, so what they're called, Dubai Hills Estate and Arabia Ranches, they're known as master communities, where they have then small sub-communities within them that are all different types, different mm-hmm. designs, different sizes, and so on. Um, they actually have their own, as per sub-community, own index, which is how it should be, because you've got one, how this works, just to put it into layman's terms, is that, for instance, in Arabian Ranches, you've got three beds in Al Reem, which is the townhouse's entry level into Dubai, uh, sorry, into Arabian ranches. And then you've got, and they, they can range around circa 2,000, 2,500 square foot, let's say 2,500 square foot. And then up to the, you've got the villas in Sahil and Savannah, which are 3,000 plus square foot, mm. three beds. Mm. But so, they will all come into three beds originally, yeah. which you've got, let, I'm just gonna put this into really easy math. So you've got, let's just say you had one property and it was 100,000 dirham, the cheaper end. And then you had one that was 300,000 dirhams, the expensive end. Yeah. How Rira would determine that would be, well, the average price is 200,000, yeah. which is not fair to either one. Yeah. So actually maybe the ones paying less rent might get rent increases yeah. because it says the average is higher yeah. when actually maybe that doesn't warrant it. Yeah. And then the ones on the higher end wouldn't be able to get a rent increase. So they're landlords. So there's a winner and loser all the time in this. Yeah. Um, so if you're on the more affordable end of the market, you're usually entitled to rent increases. Why did they just pick out Arabian ranches and Dubai Hills Estate? Honestly, I, I don't know the answers to why. Okay. Um, I know that uh, there were some communities, obviously there's, but Dubai Hills Estate especially is a, is a lot newer. In the last four years, there was only two communities handing over in the beginning, Maple and Sidra. Yeah. However, there's been far more villa communities hand over since then. And uh, I guess they need to keep it more you know, in line with what actually what the market's doing, but okay. it's a great sign of things to come. And it's how, in my opinion, mm. it should be, it should, every building should have, and hopefully it's working towards that, yeah. that every villa community has its own sub community index and every master community, like for instance, Dubai Marina, I look today and it's still just Dubai Marina. How many buildings? Hundreds. Exactly. So they're all going to be so different They're micro, you know, climates in each one yeah. uh, and economies in each one. So so yeah. we've got a big lease, leasing team here. We do a lot of rentals. We've, uh, we must be in excess of 60 leasing brokers that just purely focus on leasing in their each um, individual areas where they're experts in. Um, what's the word on the ground? What are they hearing from tenants? Unhappy, I am assuming. I think that, look, at the end of the day, if you've just moved in in the last year, yeah. it's not going to affect you too much because you're the rent you're you, it's a broad uh range it's yeah. not just you know 120 000. it's like a, for instance in town square i looked at an exam that's a, seen as an affordable yeah. community entry level community the the range for three bedrooms is between 126,000 to 154,000 for a three bed that's the average rent so it's unlikely that you're going to be due an rent increase it'll be the tenants that moved in four years ago, five years ago yeah. or so that they were the ones that I'm going to use this once again, suffer from the rent from this update. But at the same time, it might be due a 20% rent increase yeah. or 15, 20%, you know, a higher amount on the higher side. But at the same time, can you feel that aggrieved if you've had a very cheap rent maybe for the last four years and the owner's not been able to put it up? You know, that that's the flip side to this. So and you're still, even with a 20% increase. So for instance, let's just say I was still living there in that one bedroom that I had for 60,000 dirham. And the landlord gave me a 20% rent increase. Okay, it's not ideal, but at the same time, I'm now paying 72,000 and others in the same building Being next door plus, playing 100, 100 to 120. Yeah. So once again, back to my moving costs, I'm still winning. Okay. Yeah. 
What do you think um, tenants are going to do, Tom? Are, you, are tenants now going to think about the buying path? Is that why, you know, we've got a massive surge in the in the market and we have done, you know, we've been mentioning it, the headlines have been mentioning it. It seems to be every single week we've got mm. billions more than the previous month. Um, is this because now we have a, in order to have a market that keeps turning over, other than investors, we need buyers and we need people that actually live in their homes and rent, uh, sorry, that first time buyers coming yeah. into the area. Is that what we're seeing? Are people saying, well, look, enough's enough? To be honest with you, I think that, as you said, that if there is gonna be an increase in buyers off the back of it, it will be the first time buyers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I especially believe in them entry level uh, communities such as Mira, Mira Oasis, Town Square, uh, Emar South, the Mac Hills too, and all that, you know, where you can still get townhouses potentially circa th under three million, you know, two and a half to three million. I think that's where you're going to see the tenants who are maybe on the edge of, uh, or maybe just thinking, well, let's just rent our, our rents cheap and so on. And then suddenly they get a 20% increase. That might be if they were on the fence, the deciding factor to then actually bite the bullet and buy because it's suddenly now the rent might be cheaper than, oh, sorry, the, sorry, the rent might be more expensive yeah, than the okay. mortgage that they're paying a year. Yeah. But just on that, I obviously see quite a lot of, brokers pitching that to tenants. Uh, you know, I've heard them on the phone. It's a great strategy to bring tenants of villas, seeing what their plans are. Cause a lot of our tenants here at House Now's turn into our first time buyers. So they're ringing them, making them aware the rent has increased or the rent calculate has increased. You're probably entitled to that. Does that extra money, does it warrant renting or can you move? But you still need around well, over 25% of the property value in, in cash, in capital, to get a mortgage. So if now the mortgage rates, they are good, the interest rates, it is definitely better than when I purchased last May. You mm -hmm. can get them circa nearly low 4% now. Yeah. Um, but if you get an 80% loan to value, you still need your 20% deposit, you need your fees, you need the, the buy land department fees, uh, all your mortgage registration fees and bank charges. So you still need to have a hefty amount in the bank to you know, do it. It's not just as easy as saying rent's more expensive than yeah. mortgage now, but yeah. If you do have that money and your rent has gone up significantly and you actually work out that a mortgage over the co course of a year is cheaper than your annual rent and you've got a long to medium term vision of staying in Dubai, then for me, it makes sense to purchase. Sure. Evictions has been talked about a lot, hasn't it? And, you know, I think as a company, we get a lot of landlords come to us saying we want to serve our tenants evictions. Um, mm -hmm. Tenants then get extremely upset why they're evicting us. Um, because the landlord's moving in and the landlord does have to give a reason moving in. I think there's a few renovating because it's unhabitable. Um, there's a, there's four or five reasons. Yeah, like moving in next of kin, uh, selling the property, moving in themselves, it being uninhabitable, like structural damage, which, yeah. but you know, they, they still need to buy municipality approval for, for that. It can't yeah. just be old fans putting a new kitchen. But the point I'm trying to make, Tom, is the evictions that were being served, I think it's fair to say a lot of them were being, um, a, a lot of tenants were being given an eviction notice and the landlord's moving in and the landlord actually has no intentions of moving in. The landlord is just going to evict. He's then going to month, two, three, four, maybe take his time remarketing it, hope the previous tenants haven't found out and then put it back on at a today's valuation, whenever that mm. was. Are we going to see a slowdown on that? Because that would that is kind of annoying for you as a tenant to say, well, look, there is a law in place, but it's kind of been, we're scooting around that point that you're not actually moving it in, into yourself, Mr. Landlord or Mrs. Landlord, and your, yeah. your brother, sister, mother or father, whoever's not moving into it. So that did upset a lot of tenants. And I know here at the company, we got a, a lot of angry tenant saying, I don't believe, why would my landlord be leaving his Emirates Hills villa to move into my townhouse in Damak? It just seems ridiculous. So yeah. are we are we going to see a slowdown on the evictions now that landlords are getting a bit more? Potentially. I think that, you know, I, f I think that if they're getting more rent, once again, as a landlord point of view, a lot of these landlords who were stuck with tenants paying a really low rent were just giving up and thinking, do you know what? I don't want this problem anymore. I am going to sell the property. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not covering the bills. I'm 
the service charges. I'm barely covering them. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm making between two to 3% on this yeah. and it's, my money could be used a lot better, more effectively elsewhere. But now that they can increase the rent, potentially these people up to 20% quite comfortably, um, then yeah, you're probably going to see more people hold on to it yeah. on their, onto their investment. I think what we saw in the news, I know we're probably going off slightly off topic or we're still on evictions is that, you know, it, I saw it all in Arabian business and everyone reposting it on social media about eviction notices being transferable. So yeah. if an owner serves their one year's notice to the tenant to leave, the buyer, the new buyer still has to either have to see out that one year uh, notice. So we'll have to do the transfer after the tenant leaves to ensure that it's vacant on transfer. And, or they, they have to reserve the one year's notice because that notice is so between- you, so, so just put this picture, you're selling your property yeah. and you've given your tenant notice. Yeah. I then buy your property yeah. six months after you've served the notice. So you're yeah. six months into it. I buy it. Will the tenant leave in six months when I've bought it? Or have I got to serve them notice as the new buyer? you have to reserve them new notice as the buyer. So once I've completed on it and transferred and done all the formalities, yeah. I then need to, in theory, take another year. Exactly that. Unless otherwise, and the only way that the you can get the tenant out potentially or to honour that notice is if the tenant then does a vacating notice and it's all notarised through the Dubai courts. And they said that they're I'm and happy they're to leave. And they just saying, I will 100% be leaving on this date. But now today, the, ten, the eviction notice will be linked or partnered with the property, not with the owner or yeah. buyer. So we've had in, so on this, this is a gray area. Okay. Now we saw Arabian business do the, show the highlights that, I think that, an, that, expert, that, yeah, that an owner had commented. Selling, yeah. And had, so had, had said that they, that they'd won a case where the notice was transferable between the new, so between the previous uh, owner and the new buyer. So they didn't have to reserve the note. They inherited the notice, okay? Now then that made the headlines that the law has changed or this has changed and this, but actually there's been no published uh, circular from the Dubai Land Department. And as we know, yeah, when things change- circulars recently. Yes, they make circular, yeah. They, when, you know, fake listings and removing them, they, yeah. that, the circular goes out, yeah. but nothing has gone out from them it officially. Seems, seems from to have been that. very active recently, the yeah. uh, rear, uh, to be to be credit where credit's due, they seem to have been extremely active over the last six months and putting a lot of systems in place. Yeah, which is great. Great. They're listening, right? Yeah. And I think that especially they want to make Dubai the most transparent, ethical yeah. market in the world to keep attracting international investment here. And they need to make it all above board and have it fair to everyone. So yeah. they listen to the, the pain points and they do their best to improve them. But with this, for instance, I think most people are thinking now the law has changed because it happened in one case, but it doesn't take precedence. Yeah. It, 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 there's that you once again as I referred to earlier about the rent increase it's a, if a judge ruling you, there's so many factors and context as to why a judge may rule in that favour yeah. um, maybe the tenant did agree to leave yeah. and then they changed sent their mind email, maybe they sent a WhatsApp yeah, so they were something. buying it on that basis and then yeah. the judge said well you yeah, there's, we weren't privy to that yeah. but there's a lot of reasons why so now you know we're not going to go and say we can't categorically say that it is transferable. We're not going to change the clauses of our con sales contracts to yeah. reflect that because yeah. no information has actually gone out from the Dubai Land Department. Do you feel, last question, Thomas, do you feel that this change is going to have an effect on the short-term market? Be the reason I say that, a lot, a lot, a lot of landlords had got to the stage, I've got a tenant in, I'm tied to the rent, the calculator's not updating, I can't kick them out, and if I wanna kick them out, it's gonna be 12 months if I want to sell it. So therefore, let's go on a short-term basis, get a week by week, month by month, I can up, down, left, right the rent, I, they can go when they want, and it's that flexibility. I can have friends, family stay there, and they can, you know, the, the numbers were a lot higher. Mm -hmm. Is this gonna change? Are we gonna see a lot of these holiday companies struggle? Are we going to see that landlord's going to say, well, now to be fair, I don't really want to pay my MD well. I don't want to pay the due because that's what you got to do. I've got to pay the AC charges if there is a sum. So I'll get away from that and I'll just put it back onto the long-term let because now they seem to be more at a similar level. I personally don't think it will have too much impact. Okay. Um, 
just because either way, like, I think that if you're getting, I mean, we probably noticed an impact over the last year or so of more people going to uh, long term again, because as in, you know, actual tenancy contracts, because the rents are great. I don't think this change with the rear calculator is going to impact that too much because you still have your tenant and you still have to give the year's notice. Right. So it's not going to have now. I just, and I believe that people still will always use holiday home or as a strategy, short term holiday homes, because it gives just more flexibility. They can sell it when they wish to. They can uh, increase their rates whenever they wish to in, on a short term basis. Uh, and it's just a lifestyle choice or an investment strategy that's completely different to long term. And I think people will always have that strategy anyway. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think being able to increase the rent to any, because the only people it impacts is the, the owners that were getting really low rates that have been able to get 20% more, but it's still going to take them years to get to that level. And they still need to give the one year's notice to evict the tenant. So I don't think it's going to have too much dramatic impact on the short term interesting, market. Interesting, interesting. My personal view. Yeah, no, interesting. I think, look, to wrap it up, we've got something that we could see, you know, if you were a tenant, you've probably been on the crest of a wave for quite a few years. Um, it's been nice and now it, it's not as nice, but all good things don't seem to last forever. I think it's yeah. fair to say. Um, that's all we have time for today. So thank you for joining us on Dubai Real Estate Unplugged. If you want to learn more about any um, navigating or le learning to navigate the rental market in Dubai, or if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our details will be in the show notes. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your preferred platform to stay updated on all things real estate in Dubai. Until next time. Bye.